Good day and welcome to another of our bite-sized videos, this time for all you BA4 students. And this is the perfect video really on agency theory. This is going to have pretty much everything you need to know to give you an introduction into agency theory for your BA4 exams. Um, and this goes into what the agency problem is. And in fact, the agency problem is something that you're going to come across throughout your SEMA studies. So this is a really good bedrock to begin your studies with. So without further ado, let's have a look at the video. And we're going to begin this by looking at something called the agency problem. And I'm going to give you um, a role play, okay? So I want you to think, and this is a nice role play, it's not a bad one. I want you to imagine that you're a millionaire. Think about it with the houses and the holidays. But most of all, you've got a really expensive car. And not only do you have a really expensive car, you're lucky enough to have a chauffeur that drives you everywhere you want to go. So you can just lounge around in the back on your leather seats and just point and the chauffeur will drive you to your destination. Now, I suppose one of the problems, I mean, I'm not lucky enough to have this problem, but there must be problems in having a chauffeur. I mean, you've got this really expensive car. So obviously you want it to be looked after. That goes without saying. And of course, you want it to be where you want it to be. So it's no good you saying, well, I want to go to this hotel tonight. And the chauffeur having your car in another part of the country, is it? You need the car where you want it to be. But the problem is you've put someone else in charge of this car, haven't you? This expensive car of yours. And what happens when you're not using it? What's the chauffeur doing with your lovely car when, say, you're stuck in a meeting or when you are on holiday lying on a beach? Are they driving really far? Are they taking good care of it? Who have they got in the car with them? And so what we're seeing here is a conflict and the conflict is arising between you the owner of the vehicle and the manager because of course you put the chauffeur in charge of managing your vehicle and this is an example of the agency problem because what we're looking at here in our example is the chauffeur being the agent and you are the owner or what we're going to come to in a minute is a term called the principal. Now the conflict is arising because the, as we've seen with your vehicle the needs, the desires of the two different parties don't always align. Maybe the chauffeur takes your car for a spin every so often. Maybe they take it shopping or when your back is turned they're taking on a night out. So the needs between the two parties may differ. So this is all well and good. Seems quite a simple theory, agency theory. You've got an agent, you've got the principal and the needs sometimes differ. But how are we going to link this back to corporate governance? Because remember, that's what this video is about. Well, I'm just about to do that for you. The first thing we have to think about when we're thinking about it in a business context is the owners are the principals, as we've said in our example. Now, the owners are the people who are in charge of employing the directors. And the directors are? That's right, the directors are the agents. And the directors have employed them to run their business for them, much like you employed the chauffeur to run the car. Now, We've already seen from the first section that a priority of the directors should be to run the business in the shareholders' interest because that's their job. But sometimes, well, this is inevitable, surely, not even sometimes, their personal interests will be taken into consideration too. They're just not always going to be thinking about the shareholders. Just like how the chauffeur used to take your car out when they wanted to. So let's think of an example in a business context. Let's leave your expensive car and your chauffeur behind. I'm sorry to say we're going to have to move beyond it now. But in a business context, 
when salaries come to be paid, how much do you think the directors will want to be paid? Do you think they'll be saying, well, actually, it's in the shareholders' interest for us to take as little a salary as possible, so really, don't worry about paying us too much. Or do you think they'll be pushing for higher salaries? Well, of course, they'll want the highest salaries, won't we? Out of personal interest. But the shareholders, conversely, will be trying to set appropriate salaries because, of course, they don't want to burden the organisation with huge costs. So we can already see there a divergence between the agents and the principals, the owners and the directors, whereas the Agents should be running the business in the best interest of the shareholders. We can see that personal interests will occur. And that's the agency problem for you. So let's move back to agency theory. Um, and we're going to bring up a couple of topics that we're going to discover in agency theory. For information asymmetry is already on screen. Then we're going to look at agency and corporate governance. But firstly, as I've said, we're going to look at information asymmetry. Well, of course, all asymmetry means is there's no symmetry. And what we're looking at if information asymmetry is an agency problem. And in this case, what this problem is, is that the directors have more information about the organization than the shareholders do. And that's why there's not symmetry. OK, the, the directors have more information. That's how I remember it. Now, just to give you a brief example, let's bring your imaginary life back into being and you're the owner of an expensive sports car again or an expensive car again. Well, of course, you've employed your chauffeur and that chauffeur obviously would know more about the car than you do. That's why you've employed them. You've employed them to manage it, maybe be able to service it, maybe to know how to drive it properly. They've got far more information about it than you have. Now, of course, the problem with this in a business context is that the shareholders aren't always able to hold the directors accountable for the decisions that they make. You have to trust the chauffeur that that chauffeur knows what they're doing after all, because you just don't have the information. And it's exactly the same in our business context. So let's think about some of the, the directorial positions that have more information than the shareholders. Well, the CEO, the chief executive officer, obviously has access to loads of information about the business and specific data that shows how well the company is performing. And of course, the CEO will probably have a really good relationship or a really close relationship with the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer. And of course, that then puts them in quite a powerful position. This all boils down to trust. As shareholders, do you trust the CEO and the CFO to present you with all the relevant data and information that you need as an investor? Well, yes, but also, do you remember this example from a few minutes ago? It was exactly this problem that got Enron into such a huge scandal. And it's not just Enron, WorldCom and Lehman Brothers are also companies that have been scandalized because of a close relationship between the CEO and the CFO and a lack of data being presented fairly um, to the investors. So what we're seeing here is that the directors can't always be trusted. But what we really want to see is maybe how these relationships work. So what we're going to do is show you this picture of the relationships uh, through diagrams. OK, and we've got the first four on screen. We've got shareholders business, board, and directors. So let's see how they all link together by zooming in. Well, first, we've got the shareholders. We know them. We've just seen this term already. They're the principal. They're the owners of the company. And we've got the directors down in the bottom right-hand corner. 
who are the agents. They're the people that the principals have put in charge. And we can see the line come up there saying agent principal relationship. So the shareholders own the business. And the business has to make a return to the shareholders. Otherwise, there's no point the shareholders owning the business, after all. Now, the directors, of course, manage the business on behalf of the shareholders. And the business pays the directors for doing this. Now, the directors report to the board. And the board appoint the directors. And the final set of relationships we're looking at are the shareholders elect the board and the board represents the shareholders and this is the relationship diagram of how it all interlinks so hopefully visualizing it makes it a little bit clearer so let's move on now to agency and corporate governance so we've seen the agency problem and we've seen the relationship of the organization mapped out. But what can we do to stop the agency problem? Well, it's funny you should say that because that's what we're going to look at right now. The first term I want to bring to your attention is something called, and I might pronounce this incorrectly, so I'll try to get it right, fiduciary duty. And that's the legal duty. So it's not by choice, it's the legal duty of the directors to run the business on behalf of the shareholders. So the directors aren't just employed to do the best by the shareholders, they actually have a legal obligation to do so. So obviously this seems quite a powerful tool, but actually it's not always enough. Well, we've seen that, haven't we? That there's been huge scandals. So also to supplement that, there are corporate governance regulations which try to overcome the agency problem. And they do this by trying to come up with different ways of reducing the bias of directors, making sure that directors have to be accountable for their actions, and of course, making sure that the directors disclose pertinent information to the relevant bodies, to shareholders. So that's how uh, the agency problem is stopped in agency and corporate governance. But let's move on now to something called agency cost. An agency cost is about the cost of making sure or trying to make sure that the agent of the organization's interests are aligned with the shareholders. So it's really the idea that there's a measurable time and financial commitment to make sure that the agent is acting on behalf of the principal. So let's think back to your expensive lifestyle and your expensive car. Well, the chauffeur perhaps could be monitored by using GPS. Because then, of course, you don't have to worry that the chauffeur's off driving the car all over the country when you're not using it. That seems like quite a good idea. It's going to reduce the conflict. But, of course, the GPS tracking system is going to be expensive. It has a financial cost, and that is an agency cost. Now, that isn't a normal agency cost, of course. That's just for our example. But in a business context, we would normally see an agency cost in the form of something like bonus payments, incentive schemes, or share-based payments. Because, of course, all of those things, let's, take, let's just take one of them to make it easier, look at bonus payments. Well, of course, if you're giving the directors bonuses, because they achieve certain goals. Well, that's making sure that the directors or the agent's interests are aligned with the shareholders. But these standard costs aren't the only costs. There's also the salaries of NEDs. Well, NEDs are actually non-executive directors. And non-executive directors are responsible for monitoring and controlling the executive directors. So, of course, Another agency cost is the salary of these NEDs. 
But that's not the only agency cost. The third lot of agency costs, let me get those on screen for you, are the costs of financial reporting. Now, of course, we're talking about these being agency costs because making sure that information is accessible to the shareholders is really important. Again, we're trying to avoid that information asymmetry we saw earlier by making these financial reports available. So, of course, that's going to be another set of costs. Uh, and, and something else to be included in this section would be the auditing costs as well. Now, of course, the one problem with all of these is that they cost. They're costing the organization. So, in fact, the shareholders are reducing the amount that is returned to them. So, of course, what's really vital is that a balance is sought. And the balance is that there's acceptable expenses to make sure that the directors are running the business effectively. But, of course, these have to be balanced against making sure there's a reasonable return of investment to the shareholders. So, there we go. We've been looking at what agency cost is, the three groups of agency costs. Remember the standard costs in the first section should include a lot of things, not just bonus payments, but also incentive schemes, share based payments, the two extra set of costs, and the balance that needs to be sought so the shareholders aren't impacted too negatively. So there we go. Thank you very much for listening today. That's our short video on agency issues, the agency problem, agency cost, and hopefully that gives you a real feel for what you're going to find in your BA4 exams. If you like this video, be sure to press like, or perhaps you might want more of these videos, so subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck with your revision.